everyone, my name is Holden Hardman. Thank you so much for joining us again for another video, especially since many of y'all did not like our reaction to the Man of Steel video. I got quite a few comments and upvotes about my behavior in the last uh, DCEU movie about us watching along. A lot of people thought that I was making too many jokes and talking throughout. Here are some, just a few of the comments that we got. That's fine. Uh, so I did not mean to taint Matt's experience or your experience watching along. A lot of people thought that we we're just MCU fanboys that just hate on the DCEU. That was not my intention to come off that way. And as a matter of fact, even in our post discussion, while I did have a lot of criticisms towards the movie, I still gave it, I think, either a six or a seven uh, rating. So I, I still enjoyed it. I just had some criticisms about it. Matt, I, I didn't mean to taint the movie for you. I hope uh, you were still able to enjoy it. You're a terrible person for everything that you said and did. Hold on. Uh, yeah, just, yeah. Terrible. Okay. Yep. Did you feel like it was tainted for you? No. Why? I I mean, I've done it in the past where I tell where I tell everybody to hold the moment or just shut the hell up, and uh, I didn't feel that it was at that point. There have been a few times where I just get distracted from a lot of just words being said, but I say something about it, and I didn't feel that. Jen and I did talk a little bit after, and I asked that. I guess I did overdo it. So I didn't mean to. Uh, I don't think I'm just gonna sit there and be quiet the entire time, but I will tone it down, so I apologize. Usually when we shoot these, when we edit them, we do put when we make comments throughout, just so that there's commentary over it. So we, we did sit for quite a while without saying anything, but I guess I was talking whenever there was like sentimental or emotional moments. So I'll, I'll make sure to be more aware of that. So I apologize for that. I don't hate the DCEU. I do have some criticisms about it. That being said, I hope we can all go into this fresh-minded. We're aware now that people are very defensive over this property, and I get that because if people talked crap about the Raimi Spider-Man movies, I'd be on it too, so I get it. This is the underdog universe. Marvel is the dominant top dog. People are very defensive over the Superman, Batman stuff that they care very much about, so I get it. I wanna love the DCU for that reason right there that you're the underdog, <laughs> I really do. Um, okay, so that being said, I do stand by my criticisms of Man of Steel. Uh, a lot of people didn't like some of, some of my thoughts on it. I stand by all of that, but I do get getting a little carried away with the comments throughout the movie. That being said, now we're going into Batman v Superman. Dawn of Justice, you have asked for the extended edition. We're gonna give you the extended edition. Woo! I'm really looking forward to it. So we talked in Man of Steel about the consequences of people dying and how that matters. I meant that as a good thing. We want these movies to be grounded. In this movie, they begin to introduce some of the consequences of that. All I know are the 90s Batmans, and Homeboy looks like he's, uh, maybe has some CHF, or like he's been lifting a lot. Batman looks thick. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that, that's all. I'm looking forward to it. This is actually one I like. I do have problems with it that we'll get into at the end. Prime, you seem to have been, at least in Man of Steel, as the voice of reason as far as people enjoying Man of Steel, whereas other people felt like we were just sort of crapping on it, which was not my intention. How are you feeling going into Batman v Superman with all of us? I did like mm -hmm. this movie. Going into it, I think I'd start from my feelings before it even came out. When we first heard that Ben Affleck was gonna be Batman, my initial reaction was like, no! Like that, <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. And then come to find out, I don't know if I'll say he's one of my favorite Batman, but definitely my favorite Bruce Wayne. Ooh. If we yeah. get into that. So that was my feelings going into it. I don't want to put out too much out there, but I did enjoy yeah, it. I agree. I remember when Ben Affleck was cast as Batman as well, and my response essentially, and many on the internet was, what? Especially because Ben Affleck was coming off the coattails of Christian Bale, who was definitely viewed as a wonderful Batman. And I agree with Prime that I think I ended up having positive feelings. This is actually one of the reasons I'm actually okay with the Robert Pattinson casting, and I kind of give actors sort of the benefit of the doubt now. Jen, we watched Man of Steel, all of us together. Clearly I ruined it for everybody. But of that experience and going into the follow-up movie, the second movie in the DCEU, how are you feeling going into this one? What Prime was saying about Ben Affleck, I saw him in Gone Girl most recently. So going from that to Batman. Maybe it'll turn out kind of the experience of Holden and Prime saying, hey, it actually turned out well. I'm a little confused because I'm looking at the cover of it and it says Batman versus Superman. If they're both good guys, I'm not understanding. Like, is the movie about two heroes against each other? If so. Let me ask you this. First of all, what do you know of Batman? Do you have any context back in the day, 90s Batman? You got any Batman in your brain? Uh, or I've seen Batman forever and Batman good, Returns. Good choices. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it. Oh wait, so Ben Affleck's actually in this one? Yes. 
I didn't know if y'all were talking about another Snyder Cut, DC, <laughs> Raimi, Spider-Man. I didn't, like, I didn't know. Right, he's in this one, right? Yeah. Nobody, definitive, nobody <laughs> definitively said Ben Affleck is Batman in this yes, movie, yeah. so I don't feel bad about that, okay? And then you throw Wonder Woman in there, and my mind is just blown. I don't know what this movie's gonna be about. Is there a villain, or is it just two heroes and... Jen, I love you. I, I, like, I'm gonna just give you a little side hug, because I feel like of all the people here, <laughs> you and I, we're, we're very similar. I don't get it. I don't know what's going on. I, why, is, shit. why is Wonder Woman on you? I'm right there. I, I thank agree, you, Jen. but I'm also from the, there's a, a blueprint, you know, a good guy and a villain. So when you throw that kind of cover at me, I'm, I just don't, hopefully it'll be good. We'll see. Jen, Jim coming off strong just on the cover of the box. <laughs> Jeremy, you and I typically have pretty similar feelings. We don't agree on everything all the time, but I'm guessing we're gonna have some similar feelings about this movie. How are you feeling going into it, experiencing it with both Jenna and Matt? I want everyone to realize that this man loves movies that are made on about a $12 budget, so here we go. <laughs> it's, you know, it's tough to have to preface a review by saying like, I try to go in and enjoy things. I don't have a bias against DC. Batman is literally my favorite character that's ever been in a comic book. He's, he's the best, you know? And I think there's a certain relatability to him in particular. I don't necessarily have that connection with Superman. That said, it really comes down to, in these two films in particular, do you like Zack Snyder as a filmmaker? And I've said this repeatedly, Yes, I think he is very good at a visual representation of the stuff that's in the comic books. He makes gorgeous looking movies. There's really no denying that. And I, I don't ever go in and just say, Zack Snyder sucks outright. So before I get super into it, I just wanna say there are elements of this movie that I really like. There are certain things that don't quite hit the mark for me. That's my thoughts on it, but I'm actually really curious to see what everybody thinks about it. One last thing, what was Vietnam like? It was hard. I think it was hard for all of us. So, Jenna was not with us at Man of Steel, unfortunately. She did watch it in preparation for this, so she's all caught up. Real quick, Jenna, quick review of Man of Steel and how are you feeling going into the follow-up? I've realized that these movies by myself are a lot tougher to get through. <laughs> you look really, really pretty, by the way. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Aww. So do you? <laughs> Solid reply. <laughs> I take compliments well, it's great. I'm trash, great, go ahead. <laughs> I like Ben Affleck, so I'm actually looking forward to seeing him. Otherwise, I'm kinda meh about this movie. Oh, how did you feel about Man of Steel? Um, it was a solid okay. I watched the whole thing by myself. To be caught up for today because yes. you are a fantastic content creator. Yes. Most movies, I've started the first 20 minutes on Netflix or Hulu or wherever, and I just don't like most movies, and this would have been, Man of Steel would have been in that category, except I, I powered through so I can be up to date for today. Do you have any context of Batman? I, well, I watched all the old ones with y'all. Yeah, we watched the Dark Knight trilogy, and you could watch it right here. Uh, back when we were doing three movies in one video that were 12 <laughs> minutes long. Remember the good days? So, Matt, having watched the original Supermans with us, how are you feeling going into Batman v Superman? If you're just now tuning in for the first time, the original to me are the 90s Batmans, what I grew up on. It's, Batman is the only superhero that I can honestly say, like, I would watch that, I'd take the time to watch it, I grew up watching it. There's something here in my heart. Batman versus Superman. I don't know. I, I I I don't know. I'm being dead serious. Like the cover, it's a very different looking Batman. So I'm gonna have to adjust my brain to like this isn't the '90s Batman. Can can't do that comparison game. But it's really strange. Yeah, that's all I got. Let's get into this one. We're watching the extended edition as was requested by many of you. We will be taking some notes on our phone. Matt was taking notes during Man of Steel. Some people thought he was just playing on his phone. He was taking notes. You're rookies, you're new. <laughs> yeah, the new people don't know that. Any significant scenes, we'll try to be like, hey, come on, pay attention. But we will be taking notes. I'll be taking a few notes because there's some things I'm gonna wanna talk about as well. We're gonna have some fun with it. So let's get into it. The extended edition of Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. What was the budget on this movie? The intro was like four million dollars. <laughs> okay, what the hell just happened? In the dream. There we go. They took me to the light. Whoa. Nice. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, so it's like the ground perspective. That's like. I feel like that's got to be like reminiscent of like 9/11. Absolutely, yeah. I felt that. Okay. I need a horse. <laughs> I can't feel my legs. You're gonna be okay. You hear me? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, 
Green Rock in a Superman movie, you tell me. Yep. Who's paying for these security contractors, General? Who pays for the drones that pass over our heads at night? Okay. He's Superman, like what are you gonna do? Got it. Oh. answer to you. He answers to no one. I don't understand. <laughs> That's the intro for Batman. Christ! Oh, he's a wild boy. Yeah, he's branding yeah. people, okay. He's pretty aggressive. I mean, Batman's always been pretty aggressive, but. The woman I love could have been blown up or shot. Think of what could have happened. Well, think about what did happen. It's like, you look good, but I don't have a mop in this apartment. <laughs> <laughs> this lavender oil is expensive. It's all over the ground now. You're getting slow in your old age, huh? Comes to us all, Master Wayne. They pulled a guy from a coffee shop to play Alfred. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, that's uh, Jeremy Irons, yeah. my guy. I'm saying his character. Oh, okay. I'm saying his character. Everything's changed. That's how it starts. The fever, the rage, the feeling of powerlessness. Okay. That turns good men cruel. Coffee shop, Alfred's got some... Got some knowledge bomb. Coffee. What does a rock have to do with Homeland Security? Homeland Security? No, 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 ma'am. Planetary security. You don't have to use a silver bullet. But if you forge one, we don't have to depend upon the kindness of monsters. It's cool. It's cool to see him have range. Not saying that he's the same actor every time, but I have seen him play similar roles. It feels like higher energy. Yeah. Like, same voice, maybe, but. That music, though, huh? Wait a you want inside's body. Okay. Like this guy, he's got to resent the crap out of Superman. If yeah. Superman wasn't here, he would have still had his family, his legs. Yeah. Get down! No! Eh. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't been back. You need to get out of here for a dog, unless you want to run into her. Don't listen to that nonsense. Scared of who? He is angry. And he's as far as I can tell, the cops are actually helping him. Crime wave in Gotham. Water wet. <laughs> Did you find the football hit? The red capes are coming. The red capes are coming. Referencing Paul Revere. Thank you. I was going to say public school really failed me. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> Bruce Wayne can't break into Lex Luthor's house. Bruce Wayne might have to. Oh. Somebody already killed Robin. Yeah, well, it leads you to believe it was the Joker with the ha-ha. Uh, no. Open bar. We'll pass the elevator. That's the one. Do left. That's right. Mr. Wayne. Clark Kent, Daily Planet. What's your position the Bat Vigilante in Gotham? Civil liberties are being trampled on in your city. Batman's a dick. Good people living in fear. He thinks he's above the law. It's editorial about an alien who, if he wanted to, could burn the whole place down. Most of the world doesn't share your opinion, Mr. Wayne. Have a bad history with freaks dressed like clowns. Zack Snyder really is so great with imagery. The fact is, maybe he's not some sort of devil or Jesus character. I feel like there's a lot going on, and I feel like I'm missing a whole lot. To help you stand for something. Is there a lot going on, or is it just my brain? Yeah, there's it, a few okay. things. There's all right. Blame no all way in hell he's in this. Are you serious? He's huge in the bodybuilding community. Oh, okay. Uh, what? I wouldn't be surprised to see D. Fletcher actually did that in real life. 
It's the blade that cut the Gordian knot. We almost sold a 98 on the black market. Now it hangs. And... Over the bed of the Sultan of Hajar. Didn't steal your drive. I borrowed it. What the hell is that? Is that Batman? He's got a trench coat on. Well, there's obviously things going on here. Okay, what is happening? What are you doing? They're all holding guns. Oh my God, I'm glad you're here, Superman. That's really gonna clear I've never, things up. I never noticed the Superman symbol on their outfit. She was my world. And you took her from me. The white Portuguese isn't carrying a dirty bomb. What is it carrying? A mineral capable of weakening Kryptonian cells being delivered to Lex Luthor. Oh, I'm gonna steal it from him. You're gonna go to war. Power to wipe out the entire human race. And if we believe there's even a 1% chance that he is our enemy, he is not our enemy. How many good guys are left? How many stayed that way? That man doesn't need a rifle for a tracker. He flies down and flings something at it. What do you look like, Batmobile? That poor Mustang. Yeah, they're dead. <laughs> I have children. You never have to. <laughs> They're dead. This is a shitload of guns. He's never had guns. Oh. Oh. Okay, now it. They're dead. Now it's getting a little fast and furious, I agree. <laughs> the Batmobile is like the last chance I have right now holding on to the Batmobile. Nice. Next time they shine your light in the sky, don't go to it. Tell me. Oh, God. Do you plead? If you think that Superman is a murderer, then throw it away. People hate what they don't understand. Be their hero, Clark. Or be none of it. You don't owe this world a thing. You never did. That's true. True. I didn't tell you the truth. CI thinks the desert was a setup. Will Superman show up? That is what they're really waiting to see. Mr. Keefe. Mr. Keefe, Soledad O'Brien. You are going to be on the hot seat in there, Junebug. God hates aliens, like the Westboro Baptist signs. Today is a day for truth. We're gonna freeze. Oh, now I get it. Wow. That sucks. Slowly. Thank you, uh, I'm gonna need a room to work. See the bodies? Oh, there you go. Damn. Master Wayne. Mr. Wayne. Superman was helping bring the victims out after the blast, but he seems to have disappeared. Bruce Wayne was trying to get the kryptonite diplomatically and then was like, screw this, I'm gonna just take it. Which was exactly what Alfred did not want him to do. Glad you said that. It's a General Zod's fingertips. I saw that. Yeah. Ship operating at 37% efficiency. Archive contains knowledge from 100,000 different worlds. Good. Teach me. 
There it is. That's what we want to see. Dungeon style gym, I like it. Your security override has been accepted. Genesis chamber ready to analyze genetic sample. Acknowledging presence of foreign genetic material. Analyzing. Preparing chrysalis and commencing metamorphosis. Nothing. Is he gonna come back alive? Was he then complicit in the capital tragedy? <laughs> so they haven't ruled out the idea that Superman was a co-conspirator. Oh, well, come on, guys. The only the reason he would co-conspire is if he was, like, gonna stop it and look more like a hero. Why would he make himself look bad? He didn't know he was gonna die. He just put groceries. The inside of the chair was lined with lead. You couldn't see it. The shortest distance between any two points is a straight path. But the straightest path to Superman is Lois Lane. Yeah. Boy, do we have problems up here. If God is all powerful, he cannot be all good. And if he is all good, then he cannot be all powerful. They need to see the fraud you are. What have you done? You, my friend, have a date. Hmm. Across the bay. It did not take much to push him over, actually. A little red notes. Big bang, you let your family die! You think I'll fight him for you? Mmm, yes I do. I think you will fight, fight, fight for that special lady in your life. Every boy's special lady is his mother. <gasps> Martha, Martha, Martha. Oh. Who are you? I don't know! I would not let them tell me! If you kill the bat, Martha lives. When you came here, you had an hour! Now it's less. Brooke, you're live on the air. What are you saying? There's something happening at the ship. Those birds of electricity, they seem to be getting stronger by the minute. No one stays good in this world. Sound like bats. I understand. Bruce, what are you doing? Stay down. I wanted it. You'd be dead already. used to feeling pain of any kind. <laughs> so 
wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Why isn't it glowing anymore? Oh, jeez. Oh, uh, they're dead. One of their moms are named Martha, too. You got to take it off. <laughs> ah, right, two dozen hostiles on the third floor. Why don't I drop you off on the second? ever try to go hand-to-hand -hand with Batman. I said drop it! I'll kill her! I believe you. I'm a friend of your sons. I figured. The cape? <laughs> ah, that'll be the cook. Excuse me, uh, Gotham Roast. Well done, blow. Break the bad news. I'd rather do the breaking in person. You've lost. I don't know how to lose. You'll learn. If man won't kill God, too, the devil will do it. Born to destroy you. Your doomsday. It's doomsday. God is good as dead. Oof. Oof. Now, military aircraft, those are Apache. They're just playing this on a plane. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Prince. <laughs> Battlefield removal. Sir, look, they've... they're high enough that we can nuke them with no casualties, sir. One casualty, Mr. President. I know that killed Superman. Oof. Sir, 
It's moving. That's a nice shot. I like that. Airbags did not deploy. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That had never been seen on the big screen until this movie, the three of them there. Yeah, that was fun. Cell right here. BRB. I'm out. Casserole is Superman's funeral. Is that the bully from Man of Steel? Yeah. Well, they're just mourning Clark here, right? Clark had this sent here so he could surprise you. Zack Snyder knows how to film funerals. Got my checkbook to pay the funeral director. They said it's all taken care of. Anonymous donor. They don't know how to honor him, except as a soldier. Help me find the others like you. Perhaps they don't want to be found. We have to stand together. We can do better. We will. Prisoner 
the AC 23-1940. The warden wants to speak to you, so stand to your feet. Turn around and face the wall. Put your hands behind your back so that I can come in and restrain you. Just finished Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, the extended edition. It's about 30 minutes longer than the theatrical cut. A lot of what was taken out in the theatrical cut was Clark Kent investigating the Batman. There's actually a lot of that. One of the biggest criticisms was the lack of focus on Superman. He had very little dialogue and it really showed in the theatrical cut. So this one showed him as Clark Kent investigating Batman. All that was not in the original. One thing I love, I mentioned it as, as it was happening, was Bill Finger was credited as a co-creator of Batman. I encourage you to go watch Batman and Bill on Hulu, the documentary. If you have not seen it already, that's all I'll say about that. Overall, I like the movie. I love seeing Superman and Batman tussling it out. I do have some criticisms about it, some of which you've heard before, I'm sure, some of which may not be as much. I'd love to get y'all's opinion on this. This was a dividing thing when it first happened, but Batman killing people and Batman with guns. That was a dividing thing when this movie came out among fans. Came off the Christopher Nolan Batman with his I do not kill. So seeing the contrast of that with him literally walking around with the AR-15 and whatnot was a big shift for a lot of people. The Martha thing, that was huge as well. People thought that that was kind of campy. Both of their moms having the same name being the thing that stopped them were buddy-buddy now. My biggest issue with the movie uh, this is just me personally, is that they set up the whole movie to have a natural conflict between Superman and Batman. You have Batman who resents the Man of Steel for all the death that he's caused, blames him, further pushed with the explosion at the uh, Capitol. We have Superman, Clark Kent, investigating into the Batman. So you have this natural conflict arising the first hour, hour and a half of the film, only to then be confronted with Lex Luthor giving Superman an ultimatum, you either go kill Batman or I kill your mom. Had that entire natural buildup not even happened, it still would have had this inevitable conflict of Superman and Batman conflicting because Lex Luthor was like, you either kill him or I'm gonna kill your mom. Just my thoughts, we can delve into it a little further. Prime, I'd love to start with you, man. What did you think? What are your thoughts? So I like this movie too. What what does take me kind of out of it more so is the movie feels very well grounded in its universe up until the doomsday fight and then I, I just it, I get a little pulled out I didn't like the doomsday in this movie when they're fighting it uh, when it comes to Batman using guns and killing people my thought is it and maybe they just didn't portray it well enough but the way I saw it was this is a beaten down Batman this is Years after we get the little Easter eggs and hints that Robin's been killed, Superman coming along and then all the stuff happening in his personal business life too. It's just the last straw. You know, how many last straws can you pull for Bruce Wayne and Batman? At this point, his only goal is to get rid of Superman. So him killing it is just, they're in, in his way. He's, he's on a mission to get the kryptonite to take on Superman. But then, you know, what's to say about that when he's going to save Martha? He's still killing at that point when he could tone it down maybe a little bit, but I don't know. I, I do see the, the conflict in that. Yeah, I agree with you. I like the movie. I think there's a lot of really good stuff about it. We talked in Man of Steel about how Zack Snyder really does great like visuals and stuff, but it's these little small decisions that just create the conflict, I guess, uh, in me as a viewer. Jeremy, what about you, man? I might be going easy on it. I don't know what you feel about it. What are your thoughts? First, out of obligation, I got to hit on the couple of things that I really do like about the movie. There is a lot of division about the way that Batman's handled in this movie and while I don't really think this is my favorite interpretation of the character I remember back in Batman Returns when one of those circus clown characters at the very beginning at the Christmas carnival 
had dynamite and Batman took the dynamite, stuck it in his belt buckle and pushed him into a manhole and blew up and exploded. So there are definite examples of Batman killing people in movies prior to this. There are so many different interpretations of each of these characters. We all have our favorites, right? But I do think it's a little bit unfair to project those onto other audience members because there are people that love this Batman and they're not wrong for loving this Batman. I for one kind of agree with Holden. I don't necessarily like a Batman that is this brutal. Watching him just freaking rock Superman in the face over and over again after he hits him with the kryptonite, it's just like, in a way, it kind of reminds me of watching this movie because like, you just feel <laughs> like you're just getting pummeled over and over and there are so many elements in it, but the Martha scene in particular, a lot of people joked because of the fact that both the moms have the same names. My friend Caleb actually mentioned this and I think it's a really good read on the situation. It's not about Superman's mother being named Martha. It's about this human connection. Prior to this, he was this space alien. He was this God among men. He was something that was a way to project our fears and anxieties onto this thing after he realized like, holy crap, we both have a mother and in that essence we're both the same this guy is more than you know what i've created him to be that said prime brings up a good point so then right after that he goes and murders other people it's not like he had an ideological about face which he could have at that moment i think that would have helped audience members so there are things that i think are really strong as holden said the visual elements of this are incredible hans zimmer scored like when we first hear wonder woman's like needle drop for her theme that is such an awesome moment they tried to mix the death of superman and the dark knight returns which are two incredibly iconic comic book story uh lines that are big and obtuse and each of them would take so much effort and care to pull it off right and this one, they kind of just crammed them together in a three hour movie where the pacing's a little bit off at times. I got so much I could say about this movie definitively. I don't, I don't know. I can't really say if I like it or not, but it's got good elements in it. I have softened up over time with the whole uh, Batman killing people, Batman using guns. For me, Christopher Nolan Batman really solidified itself with me. I loved those movies, really connected my the identity of Batman to Christian Bale's Batman. But that being said, I do acknowledge that this is other people, this is some kid's Batman even, you know? So I can kind of get over that. It did take me some time, but I did kind of get over that. The Martha thing I've softened up on as well. I didn't like just how much that that changed him so quickly in, in the sense that he goes from having valid concerns of, you know, if he goes unchecked or how could we stop him? That's a legitimate thing to, I can't believe I failed this guy. I don't even know because our mom's the same. It seems yeah. so strong to go from that level to extreme loyalty. <laughs> I get, you know, stepping back and being like, maybe I'm taking this too far, but that's not what really happened. It was a total shift. We could talk a lot about the philosophy and theology of all the comments that Lex Luthor was making and comparing Superman to God. There was a lot of imagery of, you know, the angels coming down and the demons coming up. And he's has this inverted idea that Superman is the devil. And, you know, there's a lot that we could talk about with that. And we might do it a little bit later on this channel. That, that would be a good thing to talk about. Jenna, I would love to hear your thoughts. Seeing Man of Steel by yourself, feeling like it was kind of okay. Going to this, what did you think about the movie? Yeah, and also what would you rate Man of Steel? Like a six. Okay. Uh, the opening scene was incredible. It was so good. It really pulled me in. And then the next two and a half hours, not so much. <laughs> um, I think it was really confusing or just kind of ambiguous of who the enemy was because Batman was super dark and then Lex Luthor was kind of the enemy and then Doomsday comes in and is at the end seems kind of random because he wasn't in the other two and a half hours of the movie. I feel like a lot of what was happening I missed because I'm not a comic book fan. Like I never would have realized that that was supposed to be Robin's costume and the Joker and all. It was so quick. It was difficult to enjoy from someone who's not really immersed in this universe. The last 30 minutes were really great. I think they played out his funeral. Like I kept waiting for 
that split second with the dirt coming up or whatever. Like I just kept waiting for that moment the whole time that we were watching the two funeral processions. No, but what are you doing? Come on, no, but. You're working on it. We're trying to shoot here. Get settled. Uh, uh. All right. I feel you, Nova. Not a movie I would watch again. <laughs> no, fuck. <laughs> all right, it's enough. That's all I got. Okay. I feel like we're doing a lot of criticizing. There is good things about this movie I really like. The cinematography, obviously, I think is incredibly well done. I liked where they were going with uh, having Lex Luthor kind of pulling the strings behind the scenes as far as like the bullet, the, the whole point of that was that he was involved with that to kind of frame Superman, how he was also behind killing everybody at the Capitol. But I still think it was all just undone with the ultimatum at the end. So Jen and I have been going through the MCU so far. We've just got up to Thor. This is the second entry in the DCEU movies now. After watching Man of Steel, we all kind of were like, it was okay. We had some criticisms about it. How did you feel about this one? I don't really know how to feel about this movie. There was really great moments that I liked, but there were a lot of moments where I just did not like it at all. The hero versus hero, I kind of proved myself right. I did not, I didn't like it. But I really enjoyed Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman when they all came together. That was a very high moment for me when Batman went after Superman. He was at 100. The pullback from that was just way too quick for me. And he just like snapped out of it and was like, I'm all good now. You know, it's just, it did not, I didn't like it. I, I can barely call him a hero now because I think that he crossed that line. One of my favorite parts, when Wonder Woman saw all the information from what I'm assuming is other superheroes. There was a guy that was in what looked like the Titanic. When Superman said that he either convinces Batman or kills him. I did not like that. I felt like as Superman, it should have been, I gotta try and convince him to help me. I don't like that um, he even thought about killing him. So it was not the greatest thing that I've seen. Uh, probably won't watch it again, but I'm glad that I saw it. One recurring thing that I have seen among fans that talk about the movies or have strong feelings about the movies is that we all kind of have issues, I guess, with this. Not all of us, I get that this is a different interpretation, but it veered very differently from what we're used to thinking of when we when we think of Batman and how he's presented. When we think of Superman, like Jen said, that, that killing Batman was even on the table for Superman, regardless. It might be for us if our mother was held hostage, you know, or, you know, what we killed, probably, but that's what was supposed to make Superman different. We haven't even talked about Lex Luthor's character and how very almost Joker-esque it was. He was kind of very manic and, you know, because the people with power should not have it. And, you know, and kind of that whole thing. Um, that was a big shift for, for Lex Luthor for me too, that I was not really on board with initially. I'm still really not crazy about it. I really liked the Riddler. And um, there were many times throughout this movie that I was like, are you sure that's not the Riddler? Like yeah. it was, he was very like high strung and. We uh, try not to compare too much with the MCU, but the difference is that the MCU had movies that built up to these like team ups. Whereas this is the second entry in the DCEU. We have a brand new Batman, brand new Wonder Woman. We don't really know anything about this Batman other than just context clues that He's been Batman for 20 years and Robin most likely was killed by the Joker, but we don't see any of that. They don't talk about it. So we're trying to establish these emotional ties when really the only one we have right now is Superman from Man of Steel. A mixture of the ties not really being strong yet and the characters interpreted maybe in ways that we're not used to. That's where the movie fails for me. It seemed like they were intentionally skewing it to dislike Batman. It seemed to me that they were making Batman irrational with his hatred towards Superman. Why aren't you just taking two seconds, Bruce? From moment one, I was like, Team Superman, which is very not like me. <laughs> and I found myself viewing Batman as a villain. So Matt, as the friend, we introduced you to superhero stuff about a year ago now. We're here at uh, Batman v Superman. What did you think of Dawn of Justice? Actually, it wasn't really superhero stuff. I had to agree to the superhero stuff. First, it was Star Wars. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, beautifully shot. The opening scene was gorgeous. Like, I, I was in awe. I think that might be one of, like, 
the best opening scenes I've seen in any of these movies that we've watched in the past year. I gotta tell you, Batman's intro was awful. They I, they did not deliver on that at all. Oh, he was up in the corner? Uh, when he was up, and you know, it wasn't, you know what, it honestly, <laughs> like yeah, it was kind of comical, but it was so not grand at all. Like there was, it, like we're in like a dungeon somewhere, it was just very, I don't know, it just did, it was- You wanted more of like a triumphant- Yeah, style. like how do we have that gorgeous of an opening scene and just like, we have macro shots on pearls, but we got Batman hiding up in a corner like this. <laughs> I, just, I really feel like Batman had very little shining moments. Good God, there was a lot going on. I, I mean, you know me, you knew I was gonna say that. I mean, we're essentially talking about uh, Lex Luthor, Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Doomsday. My God. This is the second movie in the DCU, and throwing in that many people without any sort of backstory, like Holden said, I don't think that has anything to do with me being familiar with the MCU. That is just basic storytelling and me falling in love with the characters. I don't understand why that's the second movie. It doesn't make any sense. Was there a reason? Was there a time frame? Uh, I hate to say, WB was trying to figure out what to do, and a lot of it was trying to catch up to the Avengers. Got it. It was, okay. it was trying yeah, to play didn't catch work. up. You don't owe this world anything. Uh, Mom said it in the first movie. Just a just a really good line, and I fully agree that it's Superman's decision. Had he said, no, I'm not doing it, technically he's not wrong. The oldest lie is that power can be innocent. Uh, hmm. I feel like that's one of those things that sounds philosophical, but I wouldn't consider that a universal truth, no. Is power the most easily thing to corrupt or lead you down the path of temptation to corruption? I would agree with that. But to say that all power, no matter what it is, is corrupt or not innocent, I'd have a hard time with that. It sounds good, um, and Lex Luthor ended up being wrong in the end anyway, so anyway. Yeah, I fully agree. I, I, I don't believe in that at all. Right when he said it, I was like, nope, don't buy into that. This world only makes sense if you force it to. I do believe in that. I, I truly believe in that. I, I am the type of person that I believe that you you reap what you sow kind of uh, mindset. So uh, I, I appreciate that. Quote in the Bible, Matt. There was this buildup for Superman. I think I even said it, the crescendo's coming. Like I could feel it, they were getting me. Beginning of this movie, great. Middle of this movie, horrible. End of this movie, pretty good but they, they really missed the mark on the crescendo. I felt it coming, like I really felt it coming, and then it just slipped into this little scene of him saying I love you to her, which I understand there's pulling at the heartstrings, but I just, I felt the action, I felt the power right then, and it, it wasn't time to slow down and talk about I love you, it was much more like let's save the day and whatnot, so I feel like that was misplaced. Having said that, I did still feel it whenever he did stab homeboy, and then you know, he pulls himself, like it showed the selflessness to pull himself in, to stab him just a little bit more, to finish the job, like I felt that. I got goosebumps like he's really giving everything that he had. This is the one time where CPR is not appropriate. He was stabbed pretty much straight through the heart, so yeah. <laughs> goosebumps with the, the military folding of the flag, flying over the 21, like I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it, but it just hit, hit me in waves. Uh, the bagpipes is incredible. There was one line that Batman was saying at the end, he said, men are good. It sounds so damn basic, but I mean like all of the evil and all the bad, all that, like at the end of the day, men are good. Overall, I think I would have really, really, really enjoyed this movie had it not been for the middle and just the convoluted. There was so much that I missed that I know it. 100% certain there are things that happened throughout that we did not touch on. For example, Batman's dream sequence none of us really touched on. The, the little vision Bruce Wayne had of the person coming through being like, you are right about him and zipping back in. There's, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that we didn't talk on, so feel free to leave some comments below. We'll all try and uh, answer those or, or do what we can with that. Let's go ahead and give some ratings. Jeremy, I'd like to start with you, man. One of the more critical of all of us. What would you rate uh, Dawn of Justice? With Zack Snyder, there are things about this that I feel like I should resonate with. I like the philosophical discussions. I like the fact that they created a dichotomy between Batman and Superman because they have to be on opposite ends of the spectrum. I gave Man of Steel a six a couple weeks back. And I honestly think, I appreciate you guys suggesting the ultimate edition to us because I feel like the extra stuff helped it out. I think I preferred this to Man of Steel. I think I'm gonna go with a 6.5. Prime, I'd like to get you next, man. What would you rate it? Definitely watching the extended version is a lot better. Try to put all of what you just seen into even a shorter amount of time makes it even more convoluted for those especially just being entered into this extended universe. I'm gonna throw it at a seven. Still enjoy it, that's where I'll leave it, seven. My rating, um, 
there's so much in this that I feel like I want to like maybe more than I do. I still love seeing Superman and fighting Doomsday. Doomsday was one of those comic books, we have it at home actually if you want to read it. Um, you know, <laughs> the being that killed Superman. They hinted at uh, Death in the Family, we have that at the house too if you want to read it. You probably have all of them at the house if you want to read them. <laughs> But I love seeing Dark Knight Returns, thank you. I mean, that, that was heavily influenced. So all of these famous comics that influenced in making of this, but for some reason just didn't click with me personally. That's not to say that it was bad. Um, it's not even to say I really didn't even like it, because I did. I think that there was a lot that, um, like I would watch this again, no problem. But for me, I think with everything that we talked about, I would rate this probably about a 6.5. It's actually the same as Jeremy. Jenna, what about you? There were a lot of great things about this movie. The opening was great, the ending, the score, the acting. Not so much the story, I got lost early on and, and couldn't catch up, so I'd give it a six. I didn't hate it, but I'd, I wouldn't watch it again on my own for sure. And Jen, what about you? What would you rate this? I think I'm also gonna have to go with a 6.5. There are a lot of good points, a lot of not so great points. I probably am the only person that does not like Ben Affleck as Batman. So after that, you still a uh, pretty firm don't like him, okay? No, I, I don't, it just did not hit me. Like, that's just Ben Affleck in some yeah, rubber exactly. suit. But there were a lot of good moments. I feel like the ending of the movie kind of redeemed itself. I liked the fact that all three of them were together, but I did not enjoy the hero versus hero. Um, so I'm gonna go with the 6.5. And Matt, what would you rate Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice? I'm wondering, Jen, did you like the ending because that means the movie was actually ending? <laughs> I wasn't crazy about Doomsday, but that type of character, I would typically be like, I hated that character. I know that there's like a bunch of allure to it and lore, lore, lore. Yeah, just kind of like a faceless bad guy. To yeah, it's, guy. that's sort of how I felt about it. But I appreciated that they went against what Batman was usually about, about not killing people and all that, because that's what I know. That's what I love. I'm partial to that, but I don't want to put that bias on it. But I like that they're exploring that. Because when we stop exploring, like that's that's when movies are really gonna start to suck when we stop exploring. Yeah. Wasn't crazy about it. Didn't yeah, it's about a 5.5. 5.5, okay. Yep. By the way, Batman's suit, it was just there was so much going on there. <laughs> so just to let y'all know what's going on, uh, to keep on schedule because we really want to watch the Snyder Cut. So Snyder Cut will come out on Friday or Saturday of the 18th, I think. We'll film our reaction and we'll be posting it that following Saturday. It'll be early for patrons. If you want to join my Patreon, you'll get to see that early. Which means because of our schedules and the time that we shoot, we will at least for the time being be skipping Suicide Squad and Wonder Woman for the time being. But we will be going back and catching up on those. But that way we can do the Snyder Cut. We might end up doing the theatrical release of Justice League for that comparison. So we'll all be watching the Snyder Cut of Justice League together for the very first time, and I'm very excited to do that. And so we'll have about one week from when the Snyder Cut comes out to us posting the video. So we'll, hopefully everyone will get to watch it. That's it. If you like this video, let us know. Comment down below letting us know your disagreements, agreements, what you thought of us watching together. Consider subscribing if you want to see more fun content like this. This was a blast, guys. Thank you all so much. Again, consider joining my Patreon to get early access to select videos like this. And make sure to check out everyone's channel. Pastor couldn't be here today, unfortunately, but uh, make sure you check out his channel as well. As always, we appreciate you watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Take care.